In this tutorial, I'll show you just one of the ways that I go about adding some textures to the game engine when I'm working within here. You see I'm in Blender game right now. And a lot of, for me, in the game engine, for me it's really a physics engine, not so much as a game engine. But this particular one is more game oriented with these missiles that I was firing from before. In fact, let's take a look at that real quick. So here they were just firing. Let's see. Oh, I've been clicking it. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is just, you, you move the missile and fire it along, but of course the Patriot missile is going to just keep chasing it down over and over again. So there's, it has all kinds of effects if, if you want. I was testing it for colors, but really what you want is speed. Now if you notice my performance, it says 30 frames per second up there, but that's because of this video recording. Typically I'm running 55 to 60 frames per second. I lose almost five frames per second every time the missile strikes and I get a, or fires, I get a missile sound. That costs me five frames per second on that alone. But the other thing that costs time when you're working with the, the game engine is not only the high polygon count models. In fact, I've just started working on this truck here. Let's take a look at it up close. There's not a lot to it. There's some double-sided polygons like I was showing you in the previous tutorial. But I try and keep these really down low. In this case, I do have some beveled edges, but one of the ways to do it as well is adding textures. So you just make the texture of a tire and put it on there. And that can work pretty well, but that's also time consuming too. You have to have nice pictures and they need to be high resolution textures. You have to calculate how long it might take the load textures versus just calculating a few more polygons. In case of a tire, that's not a lot of polygons for the GPUs today, but this truck needs a lot more detail before it's done. I mean, I don't have the handles and mirrors and lights and all bumper and all that kind of stuff. So that's a far from finished but the this here these lights though you see in the scene I tend to the way I tend to render especially from the older days before cycles came along was by using lots of lights and you can see all these lights that I have in the scene and that's nothing I've had scenes with way more lights than this but the lights already start helping bring it to life because it is like using a paintbrush and you can adjust your colors and everything so what I'll do is I'll kind of pre-design my scene like this and kind of get all the lights that I want and then maybe I'll save a separate copy of this all together or I'll move all these into a different layer and the beauty about cycles is that it'll recognize these lights it's not using these as its primary illumination source you know you still use your regular lights but let's just save this as cycles texture like this so I know what it is so it's just a separate file so I don't mind messing, messing it up at all. So I might take these and move these into a different layer and I'll take all this and move it in different, move everything out of here and then the only thing I would have would be this surface and the lights. All right. If I did that, let's just imagine I had taken everything out for the moment and I'll go over into cycles like this and it looks pretty terrible, right? Of course, now we have to look at it differently, either material or rendered mode. And I'll go into material mode for a second. And one of the things that I have to concern myself with is this surface. I have to use nodes now. It's a different color altogether. So now I click use nodes. And let's just render this real quick. And look at the rendering so much nicer within cycles. And we're going to forget that I have the trucks and everything in there right now. But you can see the rendering is a lot nicer for starters. But even these little lights, if I zoom in, they really start looking a lot nicer than the game version in a big way. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll work within cycles, say with my ground plane and my existing point lights that I had when I was designing in the game engine. And then I'll just tilt this like this. And then I'll get my camera. And I will tilt my camera. And I will tilt the camera so it's pointing straight down at this object like this. All right. And once it's pointing straight down at there, once it's rendered like this, then I'll take it and I'll render this out. This view, I'll render an overhead view, flat on, you know, I'd go Z ortho like this mode essentially. And I'd render this view. And of course I need some more lights in the scene first. I mean, I'd have to, in fact, I better, I'll just fix that up here real quick. I'll show you what else I would do. I'd come in here. I'll come back here for a second. I had a material. A lot of times what I'll do is in advance as I'm working, I'll add some lights to the scene in advance here. Let me just scale this way up. I'm just going to put one light in real quick just so we have some light S. I'm going to rotate that on Y. 
R Y. I would actually do I would actually spend some time in advance building my lights in the scene depending on what kind of mood I wanted. Alright, so there's a light in a cycles version light. So there I have that light. But you can still see if you zoom in close like this, you still see my other point lights that I have in the scene. And that the point lights are really important because that's how I help illuminate the objects and how I give how I set the atmosphere and the mood of the scene. All right. So and maybe in this case that you know that light is a little bit whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's too much. But you can see the effect cycles really brings it to life. Well anyway, so I I'm looking at it now from above again, like this. And I would actually render this just as a single object back in here, but I would render it really high. At least two thousand and forty eight by two thousand and forty eight. But even higher, you know, 4,096 by 4,096 is not even out of the question as far as the rendering of it. All right. And so then once I've rendered it, then I have an image that I want to use. And then I want to go back into the game engine like this here. So I'd be back in the game engine. I have to go back and look at it in texture mode now. So now I'm back to my regular mode, except this object here. I need to come out of here and I need to Blender game. Yeah, okay, hang on, let's do this. Sometimes you have to go into Cycles Render and let's get rid of this material. Alright, now let's go back into Blender Game. There we go, there's that. And this, I'm just going to get rid of this too. But I've lost, I've lost my material. So I have to get my new material back to my green. It might actually still be in there. Let's see. Uh, well, no, really not quite, but it doesn't really matter because that's what I was going to use anyway. So anyway, if I had, if I had this now, I would come in then to, I'd go into here. I'll just show you the steps that it would take. I'd go into edit mode with this flat plane like this, and of course, I would bring up my menu down here. And I would mark the seam, not much to mark in here, and I would unwrap it. I'll just do a smart UV project like this. All right, so now it's ready to, to accept the texture map. Then it would have to create a, it's got a material already. I'll turn down the specularity. No, it's already down. So then I'll go grab a material, say new, grab an image like this. image up yep, there's my image then I'd come down here and I'd open an image and if, see if I had any one texture cycles images I have something oh that one of those other renderings I did before so there's the image that I've just mapped onto the surface there that's the image that I did last night on the animation but there I've just mapped it onto the surface of this object like this so let me come up here and just give this I'll just give it a sun turn this into a sunlight real quick and then you see what well, I've just happened to have mapped that image onto the surface. Of course, that's not the image I w would have done, but that that'd be, it's the same process. So you basically are able to you take advantage of cycles because if it's really great quality rendering, and then you just map it onto your surface in here, or maybe you've rendered a surface, spent a lot of time, and made a really nice grassy looking surface, and rendered it in cycles, especially now since the GPU supports hair rendering. And then you render it out, and you map it into here, and that can really bring your scene to life with, and then all you're dealing with is one giant polygon with a nice texture map. So, all right, well, that's a little bit long-winded, but for those of you who are just starting out, you may not be familiar with it. I'm just trying to get as many people involved with Blender as I possibly can. I think it's a super worthy, worthwhile program. I've been around 3D for many years, and I find Blender to be very powerful and very flexible, especially with the programming language built in, and it's got a great renderer and everything. And so, uh, yeah. But it takes a lot of work, so every little detail helps. Okay, well, that's it for now. Hope that helps you with your work, and I'll see you in the next lesson.